along the sweep of Pennsylvania Avenue where Herbert Clark Hoover had driven in his hours of greatest triumph and bitterest defeat. His body is borne to the Capitol to lie in honored state. It is the third time in less than a year that America has watched the coffin of a fallen leader make the slow ascent of these steps. The President and Mrs. Johnson lead the dignitaries who come here to pay their final respects to the 31st President of the United States. Previous services had been held in New York where Mr. Hoover died at 90. Others are to follow at his Iowa birthplace. After the leaders depart, the rotunda is to be open to everyone, which is as it should be. For though in the 30s he was widely blamed for a depression he could not have averted, in later years Mr. Hoover was even more widely recognized as one of the great humanitarians of our times. To a grassy knoll in West Branch, Iowa, overlooking the house where he was born, Mr. Hoover's cortege moves through some 75,000 mourners. It is a sunny autumn day for his homecoming. Simple rights reflect the Quaker faith of the farm boy who was to become the first president born west of the Mississippi River, and a man who dedicated his long life largely to the good of others.